Good morning and welcome to Emanuel Live on Facebook Live. We're glad you're with us this morning. Hope you all had a good week. Just a few quick announcements for you. First is to say that the Sockathon is underway. A number of people have brought in their sock donations. You can bring them either during the food pantry hours, which are Wednesday afternoon, 2 to 3 p.m., or Friday morning, 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. If you happen to have a key and you can get yourself in the door, leave them in the box that is marked outside the food pantry. You can't miss it. Um, food baskets will be available for pickup on Wednesday morning, December the 16th, between 10 o'clock and noon. We need to have names of those who you would like to get a basket for, not later than five o'clock on Monday, December the 14th. Council meets this Thursday at seven o'clock. That's December the 10th via Zoom. You'll be receiving a link for the meeting and the reports for the meeting early in this coming week. And the last thing I wanna mention is that the budget meeting is going to begin today at 1115. You may call into the meeting via Zoom before that, if you so wish. If you have not used Zoom before or if you're not familiar with it and you wanna just give it a, a dry run, you can log into it starting at 11 o'clock if you so desire, just so you can be sure. But we'll try to start the meeting right at 11.15 a.m. Um, if you are not a member of the church, you are welcome to attend via Zoom, but you are not able to cast a vote when we take the vote for the approval of the proposed budget. All that being said, let us begin by lighting our second candle. Again, we're on the blues, and we light. Last week is the week of hope, and this week is the week of love. And we all have reason to be thankful for the love that God has shared with us in our lifetime. Let us begin. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. But we have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. My dear people of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, our sins are forgiven and we are free, free from all that holds us back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is All Earth is Hopeful. It is in the red book, number 266, and in the blue book, number 629, and is not in the green book. Restores hope and 
Together let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our lives and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes to us from the prophet Isaiah in the 40th chapter. And as Isaiah writes, Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All peoples are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. But the grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are the grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good things. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Here ends the first reading. The second reading this morning comes to us from the second letter of Peter in the third chapter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the Lord, day of the Lord, will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening for the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found in him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Here ends the second reading. And the gospel for this morning comes to us from St. Mark in the first chapter. 
the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. My dear friends in Christ, here ends the good news that is the gospel of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, the risen one, amen. You know, we we don't know a whole lot about Jesus' childhood. We know about his birth as told to us in Luke. And we know of the birth from the Gospel of St. Matthew. John's gospel starts off rather peculiarly, but once we know who John is and what sort of person he is, we can understand why he wrote it that way. John's first words in his gospel are, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning, and without him, nothing came into being. That's how John started. But John was a theologian. John was kind of a a poetic sort of person. His words kind of just were these inspired words that were almost otherworldly. But Mark, Mark's gospel doesn't start with any sort of birth narrative. In Mark's gospel, which we just heard, he starts off by saying, this the beginning of the the gospel or the beginning of the life and work of John or Jesus Christ, the son of God. Right off the bat, he tells us, he identifies who Jesus is, but we don't hear anything about Jesus' past. We have to look into the nativity story of Matthew. We have to look into the nativity story of Luke to hear that. We don't have any of that in Mark. And I wonder sometimes, what was the early life of Jesus like? We know that Jesus and John the baptizer, who was the the subject of our gospel today, were cousins. We know that John the Baptist was born about six months prior to Jesus' birth. So he was the older cousin. They didn't live as next door neighbors, but they lived close enough that they would have seen each other during their childhoods. But I don't know that we could go so far as to say that they were best of friends. They were, they were cousins, and sometimes cousins can be best friends, but I don't think that they were that geographically close to one another, that they, they were best of friends. They certainly got along well. John obviously idolized Jesus. In the gospel of this morning, we hear this this whole beginning. And as I mentioned last week, that with Mark's gospel, it's all about the facts. He doesn't get bogged down with all of this extraneous information, and probably that's why he didn't include the birth narrative. Because for him, the, the story of Jesus wasn't all about his birth where Matthew and and Luke sought to put together the whole picture for us. But Mark didn't think that that was necessary. He focused on, this is the message that I have to get out to people. This is the message that people need to hear. The good news. 
the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's how Mark began his gospel. And that's what he wanted to focus on. Yet, it begins with John the Baptist. And when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Because Mark wants to have a little bit of a buildup. He doesn't want to just immediately start by having Jesus go out and starting to perform his miracles and all the rest of those things. There had to be some sort of a buildup of, of Mark's gospel, of Jesus. And so he starts with John the Baptist. And the reason for that was because he had to have people get themselves into the right mindset. The people of Israel who were long awaiting their Messiah often turned their back on what God was really calling them to be. As we heard continuously through the, the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, and now we'll hear it through Mark's eyes, or Mark's words, I should say, um, the, the people of Israel respected very highly the people or the priests and the high priests and the scribes of the, of the temple, the great temple in Jerusalem. But we also know that many of those priests were corrupt. The Pharisees, many of whom were corrupt. And so the people of Israel, not necessarily knowingly, but because of hearing the words of the rabbis and the Pharisees and the scribes, were turning their backs to God. And so the purpose of John being out in the desert calling for people to come, and they came by the thousands, is they needed to repent. They needed to change their ways. Repentance is a, is a wonderful word, and we often misunderstand what it's all about. We think that repenting is simply showing our regret for our wrongdoings. And that's one part of repentance. But the other part of repentance calls for us to change our ways. And that's what John was doing. And that's what the whole idea of him offering their baptism was. Come to me, repent of your sins, come into the water with me, let the water that God has blessed, that God has given us, change you. Come into this baptism this baptism with water. And by the grace of God, let yourself be empowered to change your ways. Let yourself become a new person. That's what true repentance is all about, my beloved friends. It isn't just about showing remorse and regret for the things that we have done that have harmed or hurt others. It's about us adopting a conscious change in our lives. Our theme today and the second Sunday of Advent is all about love. And I think it's very suiting and appropriate that John is the subject today on this Sunday, which we call the Sunday of Love. God loved us so much that he sent his son into the world, but the world was not ready for him yet. So John the Baptist went before him and called people to clear their minds, to change their ways so that they would be in a better place to accept Jesus for the Savior that he was. My beloved friends in Christ, May you always know and understand and feel the love of God. Where you have wronged, where we have wronged, where I have wronged, let us repent, let us change our ways, let us find ways and explore ways with the help of God to become better people. And by being better people, make this a better world. Amen.
Let us continue with the prayers. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait with you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain us and support us in our doubts and our questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray for the wisdom and courage to change those things about ourselves that we dislike the most. To be open-minded to those concepts and lifestyles that our minds have been closed to in the past. To stand up against those who are bullies and come to the aid of all those who are the subjects of bullying. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain the, and support the people with physical and intellectual disabilities accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Tender God, you know joy and sorrow alike. We pray for, for those in our families and our, in our congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort all those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend to those who are sick or struggling with anxiety, depression, substance abuse, and addiction. And gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Today we continue to pray for all those who are recovering from illness or injury, especially Morgan, Don Davia, David Scalfaro, Liz, Ella, Rebecca, Mary Dean, Marcia, Milk Brill, Kathy, Sam Vaughn, Shirley Budenhagen, Kathy LeBaire, Rose and Jerry Perry, Sandy DiBianco, Waldner Friedrich, Nancy Sam, and all others whom we know to be in need of our prayers for healing. We lift up our prayers for those who will be undergoing surgeries and medical procedures this week, praying for healing for their bodies, comfort and peace of mind for them and their families, they await results. We pray for our nation. There is much healing to be done, and now more than ever, we have to put aside our own wants in favor of the needs of all. And we pray for all those who, for whom this quarantine and life of separation is a time of deep loneliness. Let us be creative and find a way to reach out to them and to bring the peace of Christ into their lives. We pray for those whose homes are not safe havens, especially those living in abusive homes and relationships. And we can continue to pray for the safety of students, faculty, and support staff of all schools, colleges, universities, that all might remain free of the ravages of COVID-19. And as the rate of infection continues to rise, let us pray for all the first responders, the, the healthcare professionals who will be working with all of these people to help make them whole once again. And let us remember that we can do our part by following the safe practices of wearing masks and social distancing and remembering that by doing so, we are practicing, we are protecting others. 
who may be more vulnerable than we are. And let us remember that even as we gather in our own homes rather than together in this church building, we are more than ever called to be your church. Let us be bold enough to continue your work in our communities in ways that may be new or untried to us. And we pray for all those serving in the military and their families. We lift up our prayers for their safety and their well-being. Let all homecomings be joyful ones. And as they serve throughout this world on our behalf, we pray one day soon we may all know a lasting peace. And we pray now for all whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Eternal God, we give thanks for all the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make the contributions of their lives inspire us all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, my beloved friends, the creator of the stars, bless your advent, waiting, the long-expected Savior, fill you with love and the unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever amen and our final hymn is number 256 in the red hymnal green hymnal number 29 comfort comfort oh my people <laughs>
Sisters and brothers in Christ, go in peace, share the good news, prepare the way of the Lord, for Christ is with you. Have a wonderful week. I hope many of you will stay tuned via Zoom for our meeting to begin in just a few minutes. Know that you are loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>